what's wrong with sensuality? I used this word in a recent video that I made and realized that a lot of people who are Christians might watch that video and say, uh-oh, he's saying the word sensuality, this is a problem, like we all know that, um, I can't remember, it might be Jude, who's like, false teachers are puffed up with sensuality, and we're like, uh-oh, like did I just casually drop that word into conversation? What's going on? And so I wanted to take us on just a quick little tour of this word in the Bible and show us um, something of the problem that we have when it comes to English translations. Now, I like the ESV mostly because I have an amazing ESV study Bible. And so most of most of my reading it actually happens there for my personal pleasure. And um, yes, again, there's a there's another controversial word, pleasure in reading the Bible. How about that? But when we come down to this, I, I typed into the Blue Letter Bible the word sensuality. And I want to see where it comes up because a lot of Christians will say sensuality is a problem. And I happen to agree. It's just that when people say sensuality, they often have something in mind. And that thing they have in mind is not necessarily the thing that the authors of the Bible were writing about. So let's just look at a couple of verses. These are mostly pulled out of context, but you see within the verse, sensuality shows up in lists a lot of time. Uh, it's called the works of the flesh here in Galatians 5, um, which there's another video I made about Galatians 5 where I touch on this ever so slightly uh, because the word sensuality is the Greek word asogea, and it has a particular meaning, and it's an important meaning, and it fits right next to porneia, which here is translated as sexual immorality. Um, again, Romans. So Paul has now twice included sexual immorality, also gaia, uh, along with a number of other things that are, are not proper for Christians. These are not the things that Christians are known for. We are called to be known by our love, not necessarily by our participation in these other things. Uh, some of these lists may be a little bit more controversial than others, but here we have this, giving themselves up to sensuality. So this is a problem. And if we're going to look at this on a surface, just linguistic level, it looks as though the problem is giving in to sensuality, is letting some aspect govern our lives. And so does this mean letting the senses govern our lives? Does this mean that we like soft things, that we enjoy sensuous experiences, or for those of us with a more sexually open capacity, that kissing and touching and, and sharing physical contact where the senses are activated is something beautiful. Is the Bible saying all of that's wrong? Well, if we just do a straight up reading, it, it certainly looks that way. Uh, because when we use the word sensuality, a lot of people think, A, maybe we're talking about sexuality, or B, we're talking about the body and we're already skeptical about whether or not this is actually a good thing. The body may not be good. It's again a distraction from the spirit and we have this Gnostic fallacy that has invaded Christianity that says the spirit is good, the body is bad. One day we're gonna get rid of this evil body and be able to just be pure spirits. And this is not a Christian concept. A lot of us think it's a Christian con uh, concept thanks to Plato, um, and thanks to the Greek Gnostics. And they heavily influenced St. Augustine, who you've probably heard about in sermons and who comes up in a whole lot of ethical conversations. But let's, let's just drop back into this word for a minute, because, you know, it shows up in a, in a few places. And sensuality looks like it's a problem. It's something that people who get distracted from following God end up falling into. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to pick one here, this word. Um, well, let's look at Galatians 5. Uh, I do, I love this chapter. And Galatians 5 is the chapter that ends with the fruit of the Spirit. And uh, I absolutely like love the ethical framework that Paul opens up here in the book of Galatians. But before this, he has this list of things, sensuality, as you can see, this Greek word, also gaia, 
It falls into this list of things that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So basically, you can go toward love and the fruit of the Spirit, or you can go toward also gay. There's something about this that is opposite of love. And if you have any experience with, say, holding a, a, a child hugging your partner with like appreciating the experience of being in a body with physical senses. If you enjoy food, if you love to be outside and see flowers, like all of these things are sensual things. This is how we experience life is through the sensations of our body. And some sensations we like better than others. Some sensations like those you may feel at the end of a good workout, maybe less enjoyable. Some sensations like terrible food, like our senses are important to us because they help us to make sense of our experience of life in human bodies. We are not just spiritual beings. We are also physical beings. This is why Jesus coming in the body is so important. This is why his eating food after his resurrection is so important. This is why Thomas asked to touch. He wanted his senses to prove something to him. And so there are two ways that we can get off in this. Um, first of all, when it comes to sensuality, if we process the entire world simply through the senses, we may get some things wrong. We are more than just physical beings. And the way that we know is not just through observation, not just through our contact with things. For example, words and descriptions can help us to experience things that maybe our senses have never encountered. Before I saw the ocean, I had an idea of what it was like because words conveyed it to me. Again, we can say this is the sense of hearing, but the sense of hearing only, only, uh, I'm, I'm going to repeat myself by saying the word makes sense. If the sounds coming through our ears have a meaning that we give them, and that meaning does not necessarily depend on the senses. Okay, I'm geeking out in rhetoric. Let me stop and just dive into this word. Uh, here in the Blue Letter Bible, you have, again, free Bible study tools, which is just is absolutely amazing um, because being able to dig into the text, for example, the word pornea, and you find out that immorality, which most people think is uh, any kind of sex that they think is wrong, falls under this. In some respects, that's right. In other respects, go watch my video. Um, but in this list, we have pornea, we have acatharsia, and we have oselgeia. And oselgeia has been translated into English for us as the word sensuality. So anytime that comes up in a Christian teaching, we're like, sensuality is a sin. And if we understand the word pornea, and again, if you don't understand what pornea means, and it means so much more than and so much different than the word fornication, which most of us think of when we hear that word, you understand that there is a lot more embedded here in the Greek language than has come to us in our English translations. Asalgea is one of those words that Strong's Concordance actually is very helpful for. Uh, pornea Strong's basically says, hey, this is, uh, yeah, anyway, I'm not going to redo my other video, even though I kind of want to here. Asilgea, though, let's just look and see, is translated in these ways in the King James Version, actually better than it is here in the ESV. The King James uses the word lasciviousness, wantonness, or filthiness. Um, and the biblical usage means unbridled, lust, excess, licentiousness, lasciviousness, wantonness, outrageousness, shamelessness, insolence. What does that have to do with a nice candle? What does that have to do with the sensation of touch? What does that have to do with delicious food? <laughs> I've, I don't know if you're as surprised as I was the first time I came through, and I was just like, wait, when the New Testament talks about sensuality, it doesn't mean what everybody who speaks English thinks it means? Um, and the answer is no, really. This is so totally related to the word pornea, where you have desire takes over your life. And instead of enjoying a pizza, you're eating five slices, you know, when you're not even hungry. 
Instead of enjoying a glass of wine, you're getting drunk. Instead of enjoying your sexuality, you're doing things that don't align with your identity as a Christian, that make you feel terrible, that are not an expression of love. And that's the same sort of thing that comes in here with also Gaia. When you hear, and let's go back to these New Testament words, um, let's go back two steps. When we read this word sensuality, if we simply replace it with the King James version of licentiousness, and let's do let's do a quick changeover. Um, licentiousness reminds us of our word license. Do we have permission to do? Our, it, 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 and this reminds me of the word then promiscuous. This idea of, oh heck, I can have anything that I want, which to some extent is true and to some extent is really unhelpful. Um, let's see, that switchover did not, did not show up. But we have this. Okay, so sexual immorality. You're given over to following the passions of the body. This is also where the word lust comes into play. Uh, sensuality. Again, licentiousness. You've all been around somebody who is just hungry. And you know what I mean by this word. It's like they want something. They're just totally given over to this desire for something that may or may not be helpful to them. And I'm not saying that desire is in itself bad, but there comes a time when desire takes over a person and drives their life to the point where they forget their humanity. This is the point of sensuality, is that people get caught up in, I need to be comfortable all the time. Oh dear, you know, it's under 60 degrees for me, and that's cold. Or, you know, it's 80 degrees and humid, I can't stand being alive. It's our addiction to comfort, our addiction to pleasure. That's what this word captures. It's not saying anything about sensuality being bad. And in fact, the Christian tradition has assumed that the senses are bad so much we haven't cultivated our ability to enjoy pleasure. And this is largely in the Protestant tradition because the Protestants appeal to Augustine, uh, who again you know, brings in the Gnostic Platonic form of thinking that the body is itself bad, where the Catholic tradition actually maintains a lot of this appreciation for art and for beauty and for using the senses as a gateway to encounter God. And if you know anything about my work so far, you know that I fall more in line with that tradition of Aquinas, of the mystics, and even of, of uh, the iconographer. So you have the, everything other than Protestantism within the Christian stream, has not been so skeptical and has not believed the senses are bad. This is why you have so many ugly churches um, outside of your uh, Orthodox and Catholic traditions. This is why um, you have all this condemnation of iconography and art and the inability to appreciate a nude sculpture um, within the Protestant tradition. We're like, oh dear, that thing doesn't have clothes on. What are we going to do? We, we, we don't understand how to value the body and our senses, what we see, what we hear, what we feel. And in fact, if I talk with a lot of my evangelical friends who grew up in, in say, the, the Baptist tradition or especially in, in purity culture, we were taught that our feelings are deceptive. And probably some of that teaching comes from misunderstanding this word. We're like, your senses will lead you astray. And this is actually not true. Our senses are what help us to understand, engage with, and interact with the world in healthy ways. It's our misunderstanding of the senses. It's when we let only our senses determine what is good and bad for us. That is what the word licentiousness, also gaia, sensuality, is, is talking about here. And that definitely can lead us into problems. Because, you know, it's not comfortable to love people all the time. It's not comfortable to do the right thing. And if we understand, like, I, I'm, I'm part of a lot of communities of people who are seeking to live successful lives to go after their goals. And they talk about the biggest enemy of actually creating the life that you love is your addiction to comfort and to pleasure. It's to what is easy. And that's what this term directs us toward. And I hope this has been helpful as to why 
I will embrace sensuality, but not also gaya, not licentiousness. So what is the problem with sensuality? Again, it comes back to linguistics, comes back to what are we actually reading, comes back to translation, and, 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 and not digging deeply enough into the text to understand what it's talking about. Because embedded in this word, also gaya, is some really great instruction for us to choose how we live our lives, to choose to live in love, as opposed to just, well, this feels good, that feels bad. These things can inform us, but ultimately we are the ones who decide to push past the pain point in a workout. We are the ones who decide to give money to someone who needs it. We are the ones who decide, for me, to make a video like this with my time and to explain this. It's not necessarily comfortable because I'm now challenging some of the paradigms that people are familiar with. We're like, oh, wait, sensuality is not bad, so now what does this mean about eroticism. <laughs> We're going to have to do another, another thing about that. But there are more questions that are raised every time you kind of like shift something. But I hope this has been helpful, at least in explaining why, for me, the term sensuality is so valuable. Because knowing our bodies, knowing how to experience the world, knowing how to find delight in the things that God created for our joy and pleasure is so important to loving life. And so important to knowing God, because God is not separated from these things. In fact, we can find God in the physical world as much as we can find God in the spiritual world, just not when we separate the two. Um, so if you want to know more about that, send me a message. Let's talk. Again, I always have more things to study. If you have any thoughts on this as well, would love to hear them. Um, or if you have some resources that dive deeper. I've, I've done some deeper studies, but just wanted to make a quick introduction to this term here um, and answer the question. What's wrong about sensuality? Well, <laughs> in this case, nothing is wrong about sensuality. There's a lot of stuff that could be wrong about also gaya. Yeah.